good evening students welcome again for the terms of movements and in this terms of movement in continuation to my previous video uh, on general anatomy for terms of movement okay some of the student have raised the question about especially the what is dorsiflexion and plantar flexion pronation and supination inversion and eversion they are finding it difficult to comprehend these three different terms of movement so i am just making an another short video where i will explain you in detail okay what are these terms of movements okay as we know that the terms of movements are always in pair and they are having the opposite movements okay opposite meanings also so let us come to the next slide where i will take the inversion and eversion terms of movement let us come to this movement that is what is inversion and what is eversion movement is there okay if you see what is the inversion movement as it is in the first diagram you are seeing here here you can see that this is in relation to the sole of the foot okay where the sole of the foot is facing towards medial side or towards the median plane see this where the pointer is moving this is the median plane between the two feet and the two legs here okay and this your sole when you are raising the medial border of sole this is the grade 2 and this is the medial border of the sole if you raise the medial border of so of one feet while you are sitting or that of the both the feet okay then if the sole of the feet will be facing towards medial side not completely but partly it will be facing try to do it as you are sitting on your chair try to raise the medial border of the foot of one foot or that of both the feet and then you will see that the sole is turning and facing slightly towards that of the medial side or towards the median plane it is facing and when the sole faces towards the medial side or towards the median plane this movement which is occurring mainly on the ankle joint is called as the inversion movement so i hope that you have understood what is inversion try to do it in your own uh, foot okay then just opposite will be that of the eversion and this movement is also occurring mainly at the ankle joint and then here you raise the lateral border of the foot okay here this is that lateral border of the foot here and you raise your lateral border of foot and the medial border should touch to that of the ground in that condition you will just your sole will face more towards the lateral side it will be facing towards the lateral side that means in the right foot as well as in the left foot if you are performing this eversion movement in the both the foot simultaneously so this movement is called as eversion this is very easy not very difficult here you have to raise the medial border so that the lateral border is touching to the ground and the sole is facing towards the median plane or medial side so that the sole is just facing median plane and that is inversion and reverse is that here the medial border is touching to the ground and the lateral border is raised so that the sole is facing laterally or outside and that is towards the lateral side okay by this time you must be knowing what is lateral so this movement of the foot is called as eversion so remember that eversion and inversion they are movement which are mainly occurring at ankle ankle joint there are other joints but at this stage you don't bother and in one movement inversion sole faces medially and in opposite movement which is called as eversion sole faces laterally i hope Hope that by just practicing it in your own foot you will be able to get what is inversion and what is eversion now i am moving to the next slide we will see an another movement a pair of movement which are opposite to each other pronation and supination 
and in this remember that the pronation and supination is a rotary movement it is the movement of the rotation where the rotation occur simultaneously in the forearm where the pointer is moving this is forearm and in the hand okay they are moving together as one single unit don't confuse that it is the movement of the hand only at the same time it is the movement of the forearm and in case of the pronation the forearm and the hands they are rotated medially that means thumb which in anatomical position the thumb lies laterally okay when you will rotate this okay in this diagram where it is written as pronation you see this diagram here the thumb from the medial po lateral position okay it is slightly rotating towards the medial side and now the thumb has come medially from lateral to medial in this position the back of the forearm is facing anteriorly or in front and the dorsum of the hand okay that is not the palm but opposite surface that is the dorsum of the hand is facing anteriorly or forward so that both the hand and forearm has rotated okay towards the medial side as this red arrow is indi indicating the medial rotation of forearm and the hand so this position is called as or movement not position it is called as the pronation movement it is known as pronation thus here the forearm hand are rotated medially so that the palm of the hand faces posteriorly and partly the forearm faces the back of the forearm faces anteriorly so just the palm faces posteriorly and the dorsum of the hand faces anteriorly that movement from the position of supination is the pronation movement and just reverse of that as it is shown in this first diagram see here in pronated position the thumb was medial and now when you start rotating the forearm and the hand together then you will see that the thumb will come on the lateral side and the palm of the hand is facing facing anteriorly so similarly the anterior surface of the forearm is also facing anteriorly so this movement of the forearm of the hand is called as supination so they are opposite to each other okay pronation and sup try to perform this pronation and supination is starting from the anatomical position you are in supinated position when you are standing in anatomical position and then try to rotate the your thumb hand and forearm medially so that the palm faces posteriorly this position is the pronation and come back to the anatomical position and this is the supination do it two three times okay hmm? and then you will understand what is pronation and supination sometime in your books uh, these positions are also seen along with the when the elbow is semi flex at 90 degree arm and forearm they are at 90 degree that means your elbow is flex at that time your palm faces towards the roof okay uh, or superiorly that is the supinated position and then again you perform the same with this flex elbow then the when the palm will i mean say face downward towards the floor and your dorsum of the hand will face towards the roof that is a pronated position also okay that is also okay now i am moving to the third position or the terms of movement uh, just a minute let us come back to the next uh, movement and it is dorsiflexion and the plantar flexion now this movements they occur at the ankle joint and in the first movement as it is shown in this diagram let me bring the pointer here please okay just a minute i will bring the pointer and will show you right this is the pointer here this first diagram is showing you the plantar flex uh, dorsiflexion here what is dorsiflexion here this is the dorsum of the foot okay the dorsal surface and this is the anterior surface of the leg 
when this dorsum of the foot which faces upward towards the roof when we are standing in an anatomical position is brought close to that the anterior surface of the leg this movement is called as dorsiflexion in this movement the ankle i would say this heel is touching to the ground or you can perform this off the ground also okay so in the dorsiflexion movement the dorsum of the foot or the upper surface of the foot okay and the front of the leg these two surface they come close to each other that means the angle here of the this joint is reduced here they come close to each other while on the opposite side okay opposite of this movement is the plantar flexion which is also occurring at the ankle joint here it is the dorsal surface of the feet or the foot is just brought away from that of the anterior surface of the leg the angle here is increased you can see this increase angle at the ankle that means you are bending your foot towards the sole okay towards the ground so that now if you are standing on one foot then this foot the toes will touch towards the ground okay it will be going towards the ground so this position is called as plantar flexion and the plantar flexion means the flexion towards the sole towards the plantar surface because the sole surface okay is the plantar surface while this surface is the dorsal surface so when the dorsal surface or the upper surface of the foot is brought close to that of the anterior surface of the leg it is dorsiflexion and when the plantar or sole surface is brought away from the anterior surface of the leg this position is called a movement is called as the plantar flexion so these are the two movements which are occurring at the ankle joint a dorsiflexion and opposite movement will that will be of the plantar flexion please perform this movements two or three time uh, in your thing i mean say leg and this will be i mean to say you will be able to understand it